Controversial Quebec MP Maxime Bernier, a very high-profile conservative, held a dramatic news conference today to say that he is out of the party and he is going to form a brand new one. He attacked Conservative leader Andrew Scheer and the party for what he called a lack of vision and betraying right-of-centre values. For more, let's bring in the editor-in-chief of the Toronto Sun, Adrian Batra, who has been following this story <laughs> over the past couple of hours since <laughs> it broke. What do you think, Adrian? Well, it's uh, Mad Max never ceases to amaze. Isn't that quite something, what he did today? Which is interesting how you sort of put this as far as the Civil War, because when you're in a Civil War, you actually need a few generals and a few um, soldiers of your own. But there was Maxime Bernier, Todd, standing there all by himself. While the rest of his party, who say that they, who have abandoned him, they say, and other, and other Canadians, are all organized and gathered together in unity, frankly, in Halifax, ready for the Conservative Convention. So, though Maxime Bernier, over the course of the last couple of weeks, with those uh, tweets that he's put out, some may have been, find them somewhat questionable, but there's a lot of Canadians that have sort of this similar sentiment. So, that part of the conversation is getting lost. So, I think um, Maxime did what he did today for, for many reasons, many personal, many because he's probably still upset about the fact that he uh, lost the leadership. And uh, it's very difficult to start a party of one, uh, Todd, when you're standing there all by yourself. He came so close uh, yes. in winning. Uh, he, you know, lost by about 700 votes or less. Mm -hmm. And perhaps this is partially sour grapes, some have said. Perhaps it's ego, and perhaps it was an impulsive decision as well. You're right. Yeah. There were no MPs standing behind him. Mm -hmm. He didn't have any conservative luminaries there jumping on board saying yes. He didn't even have a name or a website uh, for this new party, whatever it will actually end up being called. Uh, let me ask you how much mm -hmm. luck do you think he's going to have, Adrian, in actually creating a party ahead of the next election, which is 12, 13 months away now. Yeah, well, look, we've seen small parties grow out of bigger ones, and there's no question that Canada has a tradition of that. It's particularly uh, out in Western Canada, they've had a lot of success with that. But, you know, it's it's going to be a challenge because it takes a lot to, to organize a party, especially if you want to mount something for the next federal election. You need money, you need bodies, you need volunteers, you need campaign slogans, you need all of these things. So I think this... I could, does this have a potential of becoming sort of a reform party versus a conservative party situation again? Maybe, uh, but I, I don't think that it's going to be as um, robust as perhaps Mr. Bernier thinks. Uh, he, he does, I will say again, he does have a lot of support, but I think he may have overcalculated just how much um, people who are in the conservative movement are willing to abandon the, the national party to join his. You mentioned the Conservative Convention that begins today, Adrian, as you know, in mm -hmm. Halifax. Now they've got to handle these headlines. How much damage, or not, in your mind, does this do to Andrew Scheer as leader and to the Conservatives? Well, the language that Maxime Bernier uh, used, I think, in of itself is damaging because then it goes to speak directly to Andrew Scheer's leadership. It goes to speak to his ability to unify the party after um, his, his election last, last year. It also goes to, uh, it speaks to what kind of, if it's Andrew Scheer's Conservative Party versus Stephen Harper's Conservative Party. I mean, Andrew Scheer, when you think about the history of the party, is only the second leader. So uh, this is, the, the, those, it puts all of those things into question. But I've been talking to a number of Conservatives who are on the ground in Halifax, and these are not, you know, rah, rah, we, we, we all um, voted for Andrew Scheer and we supported him. A lot of them supported Maxime. They're very much united under one banner, and that is to defeat the Liberals in the next election. That's the sort of language and messaging you're going to hear being uh, pushed back from Conservatives over the course of the next, I'd say, 48 hours. They've got um, some interesting policy discussions coming forward. I know that they don't want to have this front and center, but this is the reality. Uh, what's playing in their favor, I suppose, is that the Liberal Party of Canada continues to have their own trips and stumbles. They can take advantage of that, but um, not uh, suboptimal as far as going into a party convention. But that said, uh, they still have a, a very good opportunity to communicate with Canadians what their message is. Uh, and it's August, you know, so people aren't as engaged as perhaps we are. <laughs> Adrian Batra, the editor-in-chief of the Toronto Sun, joining us from Toronto. Great to have you on, as always, Adrian. Thank you for this. Thanks, Todd. <laughs>